Buongiorno. So this is our second day in Venice. We've booked a three hour tour of St. Mark's Basilica and the Doge's Palace with this guy, Matteo. I don't know if it's because it's cold, rainy and windy, but we're the only two people that turned up. So lucky for us, it's a private tour. Venice is a city, definitely, made of, built on many different small islands. The most important characteristic of these islands and all these lagoon is that the land is sandy, the soil is sandy. So these islands are made of layers of sand. There's no clay, neither rock under our feet. So all these buildings, all of them were built on sand. The biggest problem of these islands was not only the fact that they were sandy islands, but they were completely lacking fresh water. If you dig through a sandy island, what kind of water do you get? Salt, Salt water. So these things, they are called Venetian wells. So what kind of water could they drink centuries ago? You try to capture rainwater. So actually, we call them wells, but they are cisterns. And the cistern is actually under our feet. When it rained, water used to flow on the surface and reach those holes. How pretty St. Mark's Basilica is. And I didn't know this, but it's called St. Mark's Basilica because the Saint Mark, like from the Bible, his crypt is in there. And that building is really old <laughs> really old it's like a thousand years old as well you see in there a lot of beautiful um, stonework and a lot of murals that were all brought in from other countries like Egypt and um, all over the world um, and based on what was the big superpower at the time um, Constantinople Istanbul now you have to consider that compared to other Italian and European cities, Venice is less ancient. It's not a city of the Roman Empire, so there's no Roman architecture. It's a city of the Middle Ages, and when it was built, basically, the most important city in the Mediterranean at that time was Constantinople. So basically they drew the influence to build this church from Constantinople, the seat of the Byzantine Empire. This amazing screen is called the Golden Altar. What is this object? This is basically a jewel made of gold, silver, a lot of figures. Those figures are, are enamels, so they're made of molten glass, and a large quantity of precious stones. The Bible actually is made of the Old Testament, which is used also in Judaism, and the New Testament. The New Testament is based on the four Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. Well, basically, according to Christian religion, the body of St. Mark the Evangelist is buried in this church. And that's exactly what it is. The body of St. Mark the Evangelist. So, for a worshipper, sometimes you find people actually kneeling down over here and basically worshipping the body of St. Mark. This was the private chapel for the Doge's Palace, even if it's the biggest church in town. Okay? <laughs> but now, this is the cathedral of Venice, the Duomo. On the right, we have Neptune, representing the god of water, the god of the sea, basically. And on the left, Mars, the god of war, and thus, basically, by station, land. The winged lion on the top of the arch, and it represents the Venetian state. So the message of those statues of that group is that Venice, the state of Venice, rules both water and land. We are in the courtyard for the Doge's palace. The Doge was like the elected know, president, prime minister, the elected head of um, the Venetian state. Once they were elected, 
they were in that position for life and they lived in this palace and basically they were the, the figurehead of the government but it was very diplomatic government they had a senate um, so their their actual powers were kind of limited they were more of a, a token head or a ceremonial head but this is the palace that the doges lived in there was i think 150 of them over history for about a thousand years a thousand and a hundred years and there have been 120 doges until napoleon put an end to that in the 1700s the room where foreign dignitaries would go in and meet the doja so if you imagine entering this building as a foreign ambassador you you expect it to be introduced to the doja you would stare from that distance to the central seat over here and this is the place where the doja used to sit the doja doesn't sit higher than the other people sitting around there is no throne that's a simple bench and then the uh, big senate room the big government room which um, the guide said was the biggest room in europe that doesn't have arches or columns or something supporting the roof the core of the venetian political system the major council the secret passage to the prison, the prison next door that there's a complete system which is hidden and it was used to move prisoners through the building so this is a kind of mezzanine hidden between the levels this is the wall of the palace and it's been carved on a second moment to connect the palace to another building how you take a look out of the window or above a canal. The bridge. You see, the Doge's Palace now is on our left. We're in between. We're floating between the Doge's Palace and the building that you see right there. These spaces at your right are all prison cells. The halls were used to pass food and drinks without opening the gates. Very strong metal locks, which was impossible to open from the inside. So mum wouldn't do this in Prague but the guide assures her that this has a lift. So we're gonna go right up to the top of this bell tower. Um, it's apparently you get a really awesome view of Venice. And even though it's really foggy today, so I don't know how good the view's gonna be, you're only in Venice once, hey. Not gonna lie, it's cold as shit up here. My hands are starting to freeze. So can you see down there, so that, is the Doge's Palace, where we just were. This old duck looks like she's gone to the snow. So this is the southern, or well, eastern really, I guess, side of Venice. That, um, the, so the Adriatic Sea is out that way. It's a bit warm up here, eh? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> so hot. Look at you. So I hot. I it was And that is a good chunk of Venice. It's quite big, hey? Really big. Let's have some lunch. We're having lunch at what we're not entirely sure if it's authentic or a tourist trap. But it's nice. I don't think it is a tourist trap. It's nice. I don't know what this is, but it is nice. And it'll be swordfish or something random. <laughs> Didn't think you like parmesan cheese. I don't. It's so funny. I never realised this about you before. What? You're very. Um, non-adventurous with your tastes. Basically a steak, chips and sausages. What about olives? I don't like the taste. What about... You never liked olives until you were with Well, you never gave me olives. How would I know? German sausages. Why have you never had a German sausage? I grew up in a small country town. I didn't have German See? sausages. meat and three veg. 
Cage. Cage on my cord. That's as fancy as mum gets. They look at you being all adventurous now, eh? You wait till we get to Egypt. Such a slow eater. Come on, no, I'm not gonna. I really like that. I think it's really cool, but I don't think you could really spend more than two days here. I'm sure there's heaps of stuff to do. Like if you had a local guide that would take you around all the different things, but in terms of like famous sites that I know of, it's just coming for the vibe, really. I'm, I'm trying to get lost and mum's looking at me funny. Because we, we're just getting lost. So where, do, where do you want to go? Is there somewhere you want to go? I thought, I thought we'd like go there and then turn left at the canal or something. You tell me where to go. Venice is one of those places where you just kind of pick the general direction and you move, you meander that way. Let's Google how to catch a gondola. <laughs> gondola tourist trap. Oh, mama. Whoop. We'll just let him concentrate on driving, on skippering. I think it's the official term. Gondolering. Relaxing as hell, isn't it? I could just lay back here. <laughs> it's pretty chill. The Grand Canal. This job would stress me the fuck out. <laughs> Can you imagine being this guy, worried that some rogue boat's gonna like capsize your passengers like this do. The uh, Rialto Bridge is there. We went over yesterday. We haven't actually explored down this way yet. Isn't it amazing to think that people actually live here? And not just live here, but like grew up here. You know what I mean? Like this is just normal. That gondola ride was relaxing as. <laughs> I could have fallen asleep on that thing. It's so quiet, hey. I know. Peaceful and just the bobbing. I'm looking at how all of the, like how a lot of those houses have got steps that go right down in the water. And you can see all the steps under the water line from the years of the water rising. What a, what a strange and unique place to live, hey. So, one thing I've learnt so far in travelling, it's, it's true what they say, you really should pack less shit. What I'm really sick of carrying is that carry-on suitcase thing. It'd be alright if you're catching taxis to and from airports, but when you're on planes and trains and ferries and the rest of it, it's a bit full-on. Alright, let's go back to the hotel. I was just thinking to myself how, so far, everywhere I've been to on this trip, like Munich, Prague, Krakow, they've just kind of been fill-in places. Places that I, I'm only going to because I'm here. But Venice is the first city I've been to that it's actually been something that I've always, like somewhere I've always wanted to go as a kid. I'm actually here. It just kind of hit me. And I'm leaving tomorrow. I saw the Rialto Bridge, I saw the St. Mark's Square and the Cathedral, I rode a gondola. Now it's it, it's over, and unless Kim wants to come, I may not ever come. I actually just set my alarm for 4.30, so we've got to get up at 4.30am to leave here at 5.15, to be at the bus stop at 5.40, to 
to be at the airport at 6 to catch the 7.30 flight to Rome to have a three hour layover to fly to Cairo. <laughs> oh, nuts. All right, well, I'm actually sitting out here on the balcony and it's foggy as shit. Oh, I shall see you guys tomorrow. Arrivederci. Do you know where we are, Mum? We're in Egypt. <laughs> but that is the world's first pyramid. This is just bizarre. This is Egypt, man. There's pyramids there. The Sphinx is like 50 meters that way. This is going to be shaky as shit because I'm not looking at the viewfinder because you're not allowed to film here. But I'm in the middle of a pyramid, walking from the a burial chamber. 